To read more of my reviews, check out anafarreviews.com or follow me on Twitter at MasakoX or at Anafile. Today's review, Hanaya Mata. It's sometimes quite blissful not having a special talent or skill. There's no pressure to perform and you can be allowed to coast along in life doing the same routine to your heart's content without any fear of failure or complication. On the other hand, the human spirit doesn't let one get by so easily and flickers of aspiration flash across our minds every now and again. And that is what Hana Yamata explores in depth and with a striking colour palette. Naru is a very timid girl who has very little focus on what she wants to do with her life. She's somewhat of a recluse save for her seemingly only real friend Yaya, who's part of the music club. Naru often goes to watch Yaya and her bandmates practice, and it's here where things get triggered which lead to the events that happen in the anime. Our shy heroine begins to yearn for some kind of creative talent or outlet for her ever-growing frustration towards a humdrum existence, or to simply live with the fairies carefree. One night though, her prayers are answered in the form of a short and loud American girl named Hannah. I think they mean Hannah, but I'll roll with their spelling for now. She's practicing Yosakoi, a traditional Japanese dance style, which is usually performed en masse. As Naru watches on, the allusion to fairies and Hana's blonde hair and unusual appearance acts as yet another turning point. The pair are mesmerised with one another, and they quickly become good friends at the expense of Yaya, who becomes insanely jealous. Over time, Naru begins to develop self-confidence and a genuine desire to dance her sadness away with her growing circle of friends. There are twists and turns along the way, as is the way with every slice of life show, but it's a ride which is very charming, probing, and downright gorgeous. Hanaya Mata is one of the prettiest shows I've seen this season, and it's not hard to figure out why this is the case. First off, Madhouse animated this, and they are renowned for pushing the boat out when it comes to stylization. The characters all look distinctive and refined. I really adore the characters' eyes. They're so unique when placed against the norm, in a world which is also treated to a lovely coat of paint and lens flares. The designers went to the J.J. Abrams school of bloom, and the use of lights and flares to punctuate the visual style are all over the place here, but they are used tastefully and to good effect, which means that they don't get in the way mostly. It all leads to an enticing production which is a treat for the eyes. The quality and detail then carries over to the music and acting. Nothing is over the top or exaggerated without good reason. All of the assets which go into making an anime work together to conjure up something which is fantastic to watch. Does the narrative do this too? Well, essentially. Yes! When it comes to the story, the premise isn't overly original, but it's packaged more freshly. Nara's desire to figure in the world has been seen before, but it's a story which can never get old, or should be discouraged from expressing. There are too many people in the world like her who want to do something, but get scared off because of the worry of failure. It sometimes takes the likes of Hana and Yaya to push one over the edge and just do stuff. You never know until you try! Hakuna Matata! You get the idea. It's a commendable plot, which is carried out by younger characters than usual. The quintets are all either 14 or 15, instead of 17 or 18. This age difference means that attitudes and maturity will differ measuredly from what you'd expect. It's evident when Yaya gets incredibly jealous and petulant over Hana's introduction, or Machi's sweeping generalizations and strictness, but the friendship and solidarity is still there in earnest. These girls will be friends for life no matter what happens. It's all so sweet and heartening in a medium which needs more of such shows. I think what I like most about this show is that it's so very Japanese. It has a strong cultural resonance and desire to explore a lesser known dance medium. I didn't know what Yosokoi dancing was until I saw this show, and I felt like I learned something, and in a way which wasn't overbearing or artificial. It felt natural as we were learning it at the same pace that Naru and Hana were. We were along for the ride as if we were one of their friends wishing to learn the art of Yosokoi. It's all so involving and passionate. It's not like most shows these days which could easily be set in a country other than Japan. It harks back to a staple of the country's history, and it's something so emotional and majestic. Watching one person dance is nice enough, but to see five, ten, or even a hundred people dance in unison with flashy costumes and overflowing spirit is a whole different animal. What I'm saying is that this show gets so much stuff right. In the end, Hanaya Mata is a joy. It's an uncomplicated story about a girl who finds her feet and a purpose in life, or at least something to pass the time away. It gives her solace and contentment, which is something we all crave for. Coupled with a superhuman effort in art production and a solid narrative, this show is something to cherish and a sign that anime isn't all generic and samey. True, there are some times when it follows trend. Americans are brash, transfer students are a dime a dozen, and boys don't speak when girls are the main characters, but these moments don't detract from the product as a whole, a must-see. Hanaya Mata is available to stream on Crunchyroll. My rating? Continue. So much heart, so much dancing. It's a feast for the eyes. If you like what you heard, please visit my Patreon campaign to help grow Anaphile at patreon.com forward slash or follow me on Twitter at masakox or at Anaphile.